I remember uh, one day my my best friend came over and she was like, listen, because she's in this 12 step program. She's mm -hmm. five, five or six years clean and sober now. Mm -hmm. So she's a sponsor. She's amazing. She's fucking kills it. She came over and she's like, listen, it's time. Like you are blacking out. You're calling people and threatening them. Like you're doing crazy shit. Like you're, you're fucked. Like mm -hmm. it's time to, and I'm like, okay, fine. You know, I finally hit a point where I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I, I agree, you know? And so I stopped taking them and I didn't taper off of them properly, which mm -hmm. was really bad. I thought yeah. that, I thought that if, I didn't know you to, this shit takes like weeks to months. Yeah. When it comes to like opioids, you mm -hmm. have to. Yeah. Fortunately, I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I've taken my share of Percocet and, mm -hmm. and fucking Xanax and all that shit, but I yeah. never took like so much of it because alcohol was always my thing. Mm -hmm. I would take like, like a little bit with alcohol when I had it available. Yeah. But yeah, um, just from my experience in rehab a couple of times, I can tell you that kicking that is, is really rough. I didn't know. That was the first time I ever like got hooked on drugs like that, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I didn't know. She told me, she's like, you have to taper off and these are going to be your withdrawal symptoms and whatever. And I remember the first day. So what I consider tapering off was just give it three days. Like I was like, I'm going to go from three bars to, you know, one bar at night and then one bar in the morning to half a bar at night, half a bar in the morning to a quarter at night and then a quarter in the morning and then just stop. I thought so you're that, like, I'll be done in like three days. I'll be done in like three days and it's going to be chill, mm -hmm. you know? And so I ended up um, no, 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 no. That was, that was not the, that was not how <laughs> was you not do that experience. at all. So I remember the first day of, um, tapering off, she came over and she was, you know, like she checked on me and she's like, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And like, I started going crazy. I went into a drug psychosis. I was having, uh, hallucinations. I was starting to have like drug dreams. I remember I woke up from a dream, really fucked up dream. It was so vivid and fucked up. And I remember, waking up and opening my eyes and there was like a drone. It was literally like a drone disguised as like an, it almost looked like R2-D2's like head. It was like mm -hmm. blinking red and white or red and blue. And it was like, had like a white dome. And I like opened my eyes and I swear my cat saw it too. My cat at the time was like sitting there, like flicking her tail and staring at it. So I fucking lost it. I literally threw the blanket over my head. I was like, no, it's not real. Like oh I'm it's, like, I freaked out. And I tried to fall back asleep. And then the next day, it was even more excruciating. It was like the tremor started kicking mm -hmm. in, the sweating, the the it, the intrusive thoughts, the hallucinations. I was hearing shit in the walls, whispers in the ceiling fans. Like I was going completely fucking crazy. And after, by the third day, I I was gone. Like I was done. I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. It was agony. It was literal, physical, emotional, and spiritual agony. Like I could not bear it for another second longer. Mm -hmm. And I remember my brother came and stayed with me that night because I could not be alone. I was seeing shit. I was hearing shit. I was going fucking nuts. And I looked it up and it just says like, you got to just tough through it, just get through it, get through it. And I'm like fucking going crazy. Right. So my brother sleeps over and he sleeps at the end of my bed on the floor, like on the floor in my room. And I didn't sleep all night. I didn't sleep all night. I stayed up all night, like doing this shit in bed, like looking at the walls, like looking at the ceiling fan, like the walls were talking to me. I was just fucked up. And by four o'clock in the morning, I still hadn't slept. I'd been doing this like all night tremors. Like I was like twitching, like I couldn't breathe my stomach. It felt like someone had a fist around my stomach and was like pulling it out of my belly button. It was horrible. I had diarrhea. Like it was fucked up. Yeah. By the time 4, 4.30 in the morning hit, I call up my dad and left him a voicemail because he didn't answer. He was sleeping. And I'm just bawling my eyes. I'm like, you need to take me to rehab. I can't do this. Like, I need help. Like, please, like, call me as soon as you can. You need, my like, dad, a medical detox. It was horrible. Yeah. yeah. My dad ends up calling me back within, like, a matter of minutes. And he said, okay, let's, we're, let's call, you know, call the doctor, the same doctor that detoxed my mom when she had cirrhosis. And I called him up. Thank God he answered. Thank God he's a freaking early riser because I was, I couldn't take another 45 seconds of this shit. And he ends up um, sending his nursing crew like up to my house within by like 11 a.m. that day. And 
they, the same nurse that detoxed my mom, she saw me and she just fucking like broke down, bawling her eyes out. She was just like devastated. And it started, obviously I'm like so fucked up with my withdrawals. I'm like, don't do this right now, please. Oh my God. (laughs) Like we started crying. My dad's just like, can you guys fucking pull it together? Like, (laughs) let's get this shit done. Like Jesus fucking Christ, you know? So we take me into the room. We start the detox. I did an NAD, like a 15-day NAD detox. Mm -hmm. And the moment, like, I mean, within the the first, I swear, 45 seconds of this shit hitting my system, I, like, I could breathe. Like, Mm -hmm. my, my, my voice, like, stopped cracking. Like, I could, I just felt so calm. I felt so good. It was already starting to, like, you know, my tremors went away. Like, everything went to a happy medium and mm-hmm. she put a little bit of Ativan in my drip to like taper me off mm-hmm. and it was oh my god I felt amazing mm-hmm. I haven't felt that kind of relief in forever you yeah. know I felt like it was like a decade I was feeling like this and then I like took a nap I remember just like taking a nap and I closed my eyes and she, she gave me some crackers because I had to take my meds she gave me I had like a, a row of meds like mm-hmm. of just random shit gabapentin you name it everything And she gave me some crackers because I hadn't eaten in like, I think something crazy, like six days or something. Like I was not eating, like I had to have something in my stomach. And she ends up, I end up just falling asleep. I don't remember like when I fell asleep, but I just remember like falling asleep. And this is probably like two, three minutes into the detox. And I wake up from my nap and they're sitting on the edge of the bed and they're talking about the seizure, the seizure, you know, like they're, they're like talking about some seizure. I'm like, what seizure? Who had a seizure? My dad was like, honey, you had a seizure. And I was like, oh what? God. And he was like, yeah, you fucking, you, I thought we thought you were going to die. Like we literally thought you were dead. Yeah. And the nurse didn't know what to do. She wasn't equipped. She had never dealt with something like this before. And my dad didn't know what to do. He's like, the hands of my daughter's life is in this woman's hands who's fucking losing it right now. Like, he, she literally was, like, on the phone with the ambulance. She's like, we lost her. She's gone. She's gone. Like, help me. Come quick. Like, at my, my face went black. Like, blue. Like, I was – my pulse was gone. Like, my body went cold. Like, it was fucking done. And I guess I had a full-blown grand mal seizure, the shock to my system from the detox and from the withdrawals. Like, it was just too much. My body, like, lost it. But I felt fine. I woke up and I'm like, you guys are fucking tripping. Like, what are you talking about? I just had a nap. I just took me a little nappy nap. What do you mean? Like, (laughs) everything's cool. But my dad was like going, taking me on this like emotional journey that he just went through. Yeah. How he literally thought his daughter was going to die and like all this crazy shit. And thank God I'm okay. Everything's cool. But like, that was the beginning to my sobriety. (laughs) Not sobriety, but I've been clean off drugs. Yeah. Um two years now almost two years so when was that it was like yeah it was 2020 so I'm almost two years now congratulations thank you I still drink I'm not perfect I like to I'm not an alcoholic though I'm a drug addict so it's um it's different for everybody it's like you know whatever whatever your thing is only you know Mm -hmm. what you can handle and what you can't exactly So. so it was it was very interesting and then my girlfriend started taking me to AA and it just wasn't for me Mm -hmm. but it helped it Mm -hmm. helped me to um take the right steps into the right direction of like not you know staying away from drugs and I felt very held in that moment because Mm -hmm. I felt like I had community and support and Mm -hmm. I was kind of going through my own shit with it you know Mm -hmm. and so it was very nice in that moment to like be understood Mm -hmm. but I just I just didn't go through, finish my steps and stuff. I was just like, this isn't for me. I'm, I'm right. okay. I'm very comfortable with what I'm doing. So. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. As long as you feel good. 